Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire here in the background. And today we're talking about how to sight in, how to zero an AR platform rifle, specifically an A1 and an A2. Later we'll work with the A3 and maybe a couple of different carbines, but today in the interest of brevity, we're just going to stick to the A1 and the A2. However, before we get to that, there's some things I need to clarify. Recently I did a presentation comparing a Mini-14 and an AR platform, and that generated a lot of questions and commentary, and from those questions and commentary it became obvious that there were several things that I had failed to make clear. So let me see if I can clarify some of them now. One of the questions that I was asked repeatedly was various versions of, why the hell are you comparing a Mini-14 and an AR platform? Again, I thought I'd made that clear, obviously I hadn't, so let me see if I can clarify it now. The reason we did that is because I was inundated with emails from many dozens of people asking for such a comparison. That's why we did it. Another question was, why did I compare this particular Mini-14 to this particular AR? Again, I thought I'd made that clear, obviously I hadn't. And the answer is, because this is the only Mini-14 that I own. And because this Mini-14 was manufactured circa the late 1980s, and it is my perception that the 1980s was the high point of the Mini-14's popularity, I wanted to compare it to an AR that would have been its contemporary, this A1. Put more simply, I have an old Mini-14, so to make the comparison fair, I compared it to an old AR platform. Now, Another thing is that in that presentation I used the A1, and I had failed to make it clear that the rifle I was using was an A1. The presentation was 55, 0, 50 minutes long, and I don't know how many times I said A1, but I do know in the first 10 minutes I said A1 seven times, and that was not enough. There were still a lot of people that failed to understand that the rifle I was using was an A1. Also, there was a point in the presentation where I said that there are many different types of AR platforms, but in the arena of full-size rifles, most of them will be either an A1, an A2, or an A3. And I left it to the audience to infer that with different nomenclatures there would be differences in the rifles, and that was a failure on my part. Many people did not understand that there are significant differences between the A1, A2, and A3. And I'd failed to make it clear that this one was an A1. So let me clarify, there are many differences between the A1 and the A2. One of those differences is the sights, the way the sights are adjusted, and the way the rifles are zeroed. And that the rifle I was using in that presentation was an A1. There were many comments that were many different versions of, no, Paul, that's not right, the sights don't work like that, the way they really work is, followed by a pretty good explanation of the way the sights work on the A2 because I'd failed to make it clear that the sights are different on the A1 and the A2 and that this rifle is an A1. There was a point where I said that you zero the A1 at 25 yards and someone corrected me and said no it's really 25 meters. This is the guidebook for Marines. This particular one was issued to me in Marine Corps basic training where I had an M16 A1. Yes, it was the very end of the A1 era. And this book very clearly reads that the bullets will cross the line of sight at 25 yards. On the next page it reads that the M16A1 can be sighted in at 25 yards. Now yes, there are ranges in the Marine Corps measured in meters, but when I was in there were still a lot of ranges measured in yards. Now this is the U.S. Marine Corps Essential Subjects book, and this is several years newer than that guidebook, and this one discusses the A2, and it discusses meters. Now here's a point where I have to say a couple of things, and I don't like to go into this, but it's necessary. I was in the military for 20 years. I've been in both the Marine Corps and the Army. I have used the A1 and A2 platforms extensively, and I both speak and read English fluently. Now all that having been said, I hope we clarified some of the things from the previous presentation. So let's get to today's topic, which is zeroing your A1 and your A2, and this comes with two very big caveats. One, I can only explain the way I learned it and the way I do it. Different people will have different techniques. And two, let me make this as clear as I can. There are many differences between the A1 and the A2. 
One of those differences is the sights, how they're adjusted, and how the rifles are zeroed. So all that having been said, let's start with the A1. To zero an A-run rifle is really a pretty simple process. Flush your sights, put on your mechanical zero, make sure your long range sight is up, shoot and make adjustments at 25 yards until your point of aim, point of impact. That will put you on at 300. Shoot at 300 to confirm that, perhaps do some fine tuning if necessary, and you're done. Now, what does all of that mean? Okay, first let's explain how the sights on the A-1 rifle work. You adjust for elevation on the front sight post, windage on the rear sight aperture. The front sight assembly is marked with the word up and an arrow indicating that if you turn it clockwise, that will be up. The rear sight has a wheel on the right side of the carrying handle marked with an arrow and the letter R indicating that if you turn it in the direction of the arrow clockwise, it will go to the right. But remember, these indicate the movement of the strike of the round not the movement of the sight itself. If you move your front sight clockwise in congruence with the arrow that says up, you will see that the sight is in fact going down because remember as you lower the front sight you will raise the point of impact and up means point of impact not what direction the sight itself is moving. However, on the rear sight, it does move the same direction as the strike of the round. So if you're hitting to the left, you want to go to the right, you turn this in the R direction right, you will see that the rear sight is in fact moving to the right. Now the way you move the sights is that with the point of a loaded round or with a nail, you press a detent and then turn it one click and you can see the clicks marked. Then you press the detent again and move it one more click. On the rear sight, the same thing. There's a detent that you press and move it one click. Now when I talk about flushing the sights, that's when we have to refer to this portion of this third grade drawing. You can see the front sight post in the front sight assembly. The front sight post has a base on it. To flush that, hopefully not down the toilet, you have to get the base of the front sight even with the base of the front sight assembly. And so you'll see that there's a little bit of a lip right there. You have to adjust that until there isn't anything catching. The front sight post base is equal to the base of the front sight assembly. It's flush. Now on the rear sight, you just go to the left all the way until it can't go to the left anymore. Now your sights are flush. Then you'll put on mechanical zero. That's going up 15 clicks on the front and right 17 clicks on the rear sight. So 15, 17. Now this is the confusing part. When I tell people to go up 15 clicks, remember the rifle is marked up. Well, they'll start cranking it up and they'll discover that the sight is in fact going down. They'll think they've made a mistake, turn it the opposite, and practically screw the sight out of the rifle. Remember, follow the directions on the rifle. When you're going up, follow the up arrow. So once you've got 15, 17 on here and you've got your mechanical zero, you have to put up your long range aperture. Now on an A1, the short range and long range aperture are the same size. The difference is that the long range aperture adds a few clicks of elevation to compensate for the drop of the round at long ranges. So if they're the same size, how do you tell the difference between the short and long range? The long is marked with the letter L. So once you've got your mechanical zero of 15, 17 and your long range sight up, that's going to get you pretty close at 25 yards. You'll shoot at 25 yards, make adjustments until your point of aim, point of impact at 25, and that'll put you on at 300. How does that work? That's where we go to this portion of the third grade drawing. Your line of sight is straight. The barrel is not parallel with the line of sight. It's angled up just a little bit. And so that arc of the round is going up and it will meet with the line of sight at 25 yards. Then as that bullet reaches the apex of its arc and starts back down, it will cross the line of sight again at 300 yards. So if you're on at 25, you're on at 300 and most A1s are going to be pretty close. So when you shoot at 300, you'll confirm that and you might need some fine tuning. So I'll get my sights all set up and we'll start out shooting at 25 yards and see how we do. When shooting a 25 yard zero, you can shoot from a bench rest and if so, you'd want the targets at the right level. I'm going to shoot from the prone, so I want the targets lower. 
In a military setting, a lot of times you'll shoot at 25 yards at a silhouette-shaped target, and some of these will have a grid on the target. But I've found that a lot of people have difficulty finding the right aiming point on a silhouette-shaped target. So I like to shoot at round targets because it's easy to find the center of a circle. So I'll shoot from 25 yards at the round target on the upper left, and let's see what the group looks like. So looking at the impacts on our target, it looks like we might be okay for windage, but we're definitely low. So we need to go up, therefore we'll move our front sight in the direction of the up arrow clockwise, which will make our front sight go down, but make our round come up. But how far do we have to move it? Well, this moves in a series of clicks, so how many clicks of elevation do I need to add? The answer is five. How did I come up with that? Let me see if I can explain that. The way the sights adjust on an A1 rifle is by clicks. You press that detent, move it one click. Each click is a minute of angle. Now I could stand out here for the next couple of hours and give you a really inadequate explanation of what a minute of angle means. But as it relates to this rifle, each click is one inch at 100 yards. Ergo, if I were shooting at a target that was 100 yards away and I were four inches off center, each click will move the strike of that round one inch, so I'd need to move four clicks. But at 200 yards, one click is two inches. At 300 yards, one click is three inches. So if I were shooting at a 200 yard target and I was still the same four inches off, each click is going to move it two inches at 200 yards. So I'd only have to move two clicks to move our four inches. So if I were shooting at a 300 yard target and the strike of the round was off by a foot, one click at 300 is three inches, so three, six, nine, twelve, I'd have to move it four clicks to move that 12 inches. So with that in mind, we're shooting 25 yards. So if one click is one inch at 100, at 50 yards, one click will be half an inch. You shoot one quarter the distance of 100, 25 yards, then one click will be one quarter inch. Now the target I'm using, this isn't it, the targets I'm using have scoring rings on them. Each one of those scoring rings is a quarter inch wide. I was five scoring rings low of center, therefore I need to move five quarter inches. Each click is going to be a quarter inch at 25 yards. I need to go up five clicks, which I have done. So now let's go back to that target and see what kind of difference it made in terms of point of impact. And now our elevation looks pretty good, but it looks like I'm hitting just a little bit to the right, so I'm going to go one click to the left and then shoot at a different target that doesn't have a lot of bullet holes in it and see if I can hit center. And that looks pretty good. Now we'll go to the 300 and do some fine tuning if we need to. I've got my shoot and see target set up and I'll shoot this from 300 yards and we'll see how I do.
Well, not a bad group with one flyer. And as we can see, zeroing at 25 does get you at least pretty close at 300. But now we have to adjust. And remember, we adjust by minutes of angle. So if one click is one inch at 100, one click will be three inches at 300. So it looks like we have to go down about three clicks and right about two. So I'll make some adjustments, paste up our shot holes, and we'll try this again. Well, this group isn't nearly as good, but it does look like we're doing pretty well for elevation. However, even though I only went two clicks to the right, it looks like we went too far. Now, that could be a shift in the breeze, it could be me, it could be a lot of things. But I'm going to take those two clicks back off and shoot one more group. Well, our group is much better, and it's centered. So now the rifle is zeroed. So with your A1, zero it at 25, make some fine adjustments at 300, and you're on. However, although the 5.56 NATO is a fairly flat shooting round, if we're on at 300, are we going to be significantly high at 1 or 200? Let's see if we can demonstrate that. Ideally, I'd shoot at 150 yards. However, this range doesn't allow me to do that. I can only shoot at 1, 2, and 300. So I'm going to shoot at 100. So with a rifle zeroed at 300, I'll aim center on this target, and let's see how high we are at 100. Well, here's our group with one flyer, and yes, that is really annoying when that happens. But as you can see, when zeroed at 300, at 100, we're kind of high. So how do we compensate for that? Well, remember when we zeroed, it was with the long-range aperture in place. Let's put up the short-range aperture, then shoot from 100 yards and see how we do.
Now you can see that I shifted just a little bit to the right, and that's just me. But you can also see that that group came down quite a bit, so that at 100, we're pretty well on. Well, that was tedious. Now to recap, to zero your A1, flush your sights, put on your mechanical zero of 15, 17. Make sure your long range sight is up, zero it at 25, then shoot it at 300 and you'll be pretty close. Make whatever adjustments you need at 300 and then put your short range sight back up and you'll be on anywhere from 50 to 200. So with that, now let's go on to the A2. And that should take a lot less time to cover because the A2 is exactly the same, except of course for the fact that it's completely different. Let me show you what I mean. In zeroing the A2, like the A1, you zero at 25, and then you're pretty close at 300. However, in this case, it's 25 and 300 meters, not yards. The sights on the A2 are similar to the A1, but they differ in some really crucial ways, requiring the use of another third grade diagram to explain. Now, in zeroing, you will adjust for elevation on the front sight post. There is a knob that adjusts elevation on the rear sight, but that's for shooting at different distances. It's not part of zeroing. The rear sight has two apertures, short and long range. However, unlike the A1, the long range aperture on the A2 does not add any elevation. The only real difference is the A2 has a very large short range aperture and a smaller long range aperture for more precise shooting at long range. The really large short range aperture has advantages such as it can help you get a quick sight picture, it can help you get a sight picture on a moving target, it's really good in that time period between sunset and ENT when you're losing light, and it can be an advantage when you're trying to shoot with a pro mask on. Now, in our diagram you can see that the short range aperture marked 0 to 2 has a little notch on the top of it. Well, for zeroing, we're going to fold that down, and now that notch is going to be right above those lines on the back of the rear sight assembly. And you'll use your windage knob to adjust that and make sure that notch is lined up with that center line, and now your rear sight is centered. You've flushed your front sight just like you did on the A1, and then you add four clicks of elevation. You go up four clicks. Now, as far as the elevation knob, if you crank it all the way down, you should be on at 300, and you can see where it lines up on the left side of the carrying handle. And you'll see this 8 thirds symbol, you're on at 300. Make one complete rotation of the knob back to the 8 thirds, and now you're on at 800. So you'll crank this all the way down to 300, and here's a really crucial point. As part of zeroing, you will click that one click up from 300. And that's where you want it when you zero. So add four clicks, long range sight up and centered, one click up from 300, and you're ready to zero at 25 meters. So let's put that on this rifle and shoot at 25. Well, our group's not very good, but it shows that we're fairly well centered for windage and maybe a little bit low as far as elevation. Now, with the A1, remember that each click at 25 yards was a quarter inch. With the A2, each click at 25 meters is 3 eighths of an inch, or about 8 millimeters. So for right now, I'm going to leave the windage the same, and I'm going to go up by one click. So we saw at 25 meters, mechanical zero on the A2 got us pretty close. Now I'll make an adjustment, shoot at 25, make an adjustment, shoot at 25 until we're right on. And then we'll go to the 300 meter line, which is 325 yards. And remember, we're one click up from 300 on our elevation knob. We've got to adjust that back to 300. We'll shoot at 300 meters. We'll be pretty close, make fine tuning adjustments, and we'll be on. Now that brings up a problem. When we were on at 300 with the A1, we saw that at mid-range distances from 1 to 200, we're going to shoot high to varying degrees. And to compensate for that, we just click back to the short-range sight, and that'll put you on at anywhere from 50 to 200. Except the A2 does not allow for that. There's no elevation difference between the long-range and short-range aperture. The short-range is just a bigger aperture than the long-range. So what if we want to shoot at distances of 1 to 200? Well, you can just aim a little bit low, 
or you can zero your rifle differently. And here's where I leave the textbook aside and explain to you how I zero my A2 platform rifle. What I'm going to do is put the mechanical zero on, shoot at 25, adjust so I know I'm pretty close. Then I'm going to go to 100 yards. The range I'm using is measured in yards, so I'm going to use yards. And I'm going to put up a fairly big target. Now I might be off, but if the target's fairly large, I'll at least hit the target somewhere. And then I'm going to make adjustments on my front sight post for elevation until I am zeroed at 100 yards. Now when I say that, the immediate question is, the elevation knob is graduated from 3 to 800. If I zero at 100, will it render that knob moot? And the answer is, in some ways, yes, but in some ways, no. And we'll come back to that. So, let's go to the 100-yard line and see where I hit. So I've got the shoot and see target set up, and I will shoot this from 100 yards. Now, based on the 25 meter zero, I know I'm not going to be really on, but I should be able to at least hit the target. And we'll see how we do. Well, here's our group, and as I expected, I'm hitting high. So I'll paste up these shot holes, go down six clicks, go right one click, and shoot this again from 100. And now we look pretty good for windage, but we're a little low, so I'm going to add back two of those clicks, paste up these shot holes, shoot one more group. And we're on. So now that we're on at 100, what good does this do us at 300? I'm going to paste up these shot holes and move this target to the 300 yard line and shoot it again and we'll see how low we are. Well, you can see we've got a fairly good group. This one that I didn't paste is a staple hole. Now, the group is low. That's what we'd expect when we went from one to 300 yards. But why is the group to the left? Well, it could be just me, but we are getting quite a bit of wind blowing in this direction. So I'm not going to worry too much about the windage. What I am going to do is go up two clicks on my elevation knob and then go back to the 300 and shoot this target again.
and it looks like we're pretty well on. Now this shot over here, that's a flyer, that's just me. It looks like we might still be a little low, and I might go up one more click and shoot the target again, but if I do, I won't make you sit through watching it. So the way the sights on this A2 are set now is that the 8-3 marking actually has me zeroed at 100, and then I have to add several clicks on the elevation knob to get me zeroed at 300. But that puts the elevation knob in a place that is not in conjunction with any markings that are on it. So when I have to add those clicks to be on at 300, how do I know that I have it in the right place? And the answer is, you mark it with some bright colored nail polish. And if you choose to shoot at even farther distances, like 400 or 500 yards, you can add additional marks. You can have three marks on there, one for three, one for four, one for five. Now I know I said that we were going to leave the manual behind, but would you believe that in a slightly different application, this manual suggests marking your sights with nail polish? Go figure. So the bottom line to all of this is that everything I've shown you has been a combination of the way I learned it and or the way I do it to zero these rifles. Other people may do it in different ways. So if you've sat through this entire presentation, thank you for your attention, and thank you for watching the How to Zero Your A1 and A2 Platform video.